Hello, how are you? So do you find it tricky? Do you find yourself kind of spotting that you fall in the same ways over and over again? Maybe in small things, maybe in really serious things. And you can't seem to stop. No matter how many confessions you do, no matter, no matter how much prayer you do, no matter how much advice you get, you keep going back to the same sin over and over again. Well, that's, that would put you with most of humanity, most of the church, certainly. So what do we do in this situation? Because uh, the Lord does desire freedom for us. What is helpful? So there's a couple of things. I'm just going to talk about one of them today that I have found really helpful with this. St. Thomas Aquinas, he says that we never choose evil for evil's sake. Like the human will is incapable of seeing some, that something is entirely evil and then choosing it because it's entirely evil. We kind of see some good in it and we're choosing it for the sake of the good bit. Whether it's uh, just a perceived good or it's just a purely selfish good, and we recognize, yeah, this is going to hurt other people. We just, we're able to sort of not look at that stuff and just focus on the, the good bit, the real or the apparent good. So that's not that we want to make excuses and say, oh, you know, you're just, it's all about what you intend. No, as the old saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I might intend to do something good, but do end up doing something evil. Okay, well, I'm still responsible for the evil I've done. Maybe less responsible, but I'm still responsible. But something else can be gained from this, this insight. And this is actually something I've been experimenting with and I found it really helpful. Well, what is it? It is to talk to, I kind of talk to my heart, talk to that part of yourself that well, maybe we won't use the word idiot, but is like a little child who just doesn't realize that, oh no, the, if you put your hand on the cooker, it's going to burn you. So I have started to, to talk to my heart a little bit as if it's a little child, especially when I feel, you know, a temptation to sin in, in a way that I've been, I'm trying to stop. So when I find a temptation, when I feel a temptation rising, instead of going, oh no, temptation, rather I kind of see it as a little sign, a little flag coming up from a certain area in my soul that needs to hear the gospel. And instead of freaking out, instead of panicking, being afraid, I kind of go, oh, Part of me is longing and needs goodness, real goodness, but it doesn't know how to find it. The only thing it knows how to do is to go after sin. So I need to just be really kind to it and tell it the truth, but also listen to it. So I'll pause if I can, and I'll just have a little chat with myself, with my heart, as if I was talking to a little child. And I kind of go, oh, hello, how are you? Yeah, what's going on? Are you, you seem to be uh, in need. You seem to be in need. I'd love to listen to you. And I just take it really slowly, really calmly. I'm, I don't get freaked out anymore by temptation. I'm just going to go, wow, okay, do you want to talk? And I realized that, yeah, that these urges and these movements of the heart, it's actually just hungers of these hidden, strange, underground places inside of me that actually just needs the love of God. It needs to be known and seen and accepted. It needs to be known and accepted even just by me. That I'm, as St. Paul says, an ambassador for Christ. That obviously the gospel in me hearing it and it entering into my intellect hasn't actually gotten down into, these, into my heart, into some parts, the bones of my soul, you could say. So I need to be an evangelist to my own heart. And I need to proclaim the gospel to myself in a way that those parts of me can understand. So that's what I've started doing. And I've started saying, you know, I accept you, you know, in this situation, you know, it's, it's okay that you are, that you have need. It's okay that you are hungry for love. It's okay that you're whatever, whatever it is. If you want to tell me, if you want to share that with me, I'd love to listen to you. And I just sort of wait. And I just have this attitude of love and acceptance as what I would have for a little child who was scared, freaking out, and sometimes also these things can come out of a place of pain. Sometimes we run towards sin, not because we want sin, but because we're trying to get away from something negative. We're trying to get away from pain. So I recognize that too. And I'll say that to myself, you know, if, if there's pain involved, I kind of say, you know, it's okay that you, uh, you are experiencing pain. I'd love to be with you in this. It's not going to kill us. It's okay to be uncomfortable. 
I'll be uncomfortable with you. How about that? And I sit and I wait. And of course, it doesn't just stop with me. Most importantly, I remind my heart or just let it know that it's loved by God. Say, you know, Jesus is with you. You are perfectly and totally loved and accepted by God right now. And I'll just repeat that to my heart. And I'll trust just as a mum or a dad do with their little kids that they know this will pass. This is an emotion. In the child, it's an emotion. It's a desire, it's a hunger, it's a pain, it's whatever it is. And so too in my heart, there's parts of me that's still a child and it's the hunger, it's a pain, it's an emotion, it's a freak out. And it will pass, especially when it's held and loved. And that's what God wants to do. This is why Jesus came. He came to forgive our sins, to cancel that debt, to give us a hope for heaven, a confidence and a confident expectation of getting to heaven because of his goodness. And also that the love of God could be manifest to us, could enter into our heart by the Holy Spirit and that our hearts could experience it. Every single part of us could know and experience the transformative, saving love of God the Father in Christ Jesus. And I found when I do this, my heart calms down after a little while. It doesn't have to escape from pain or reality. It doesn't have to act out in some way that it thinks is good, but it's actually sinful. It's actually getting what it needs. So there you go. That's my little thought. Sure, give it a go if you like. And I hope that helps. God bless you.